فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم قاعدة الثانية second principle الضرر لا يزال بالضرر لا يرد باطل بباطل the second one is a harm is not eradicated is that correct word? Eradicated? Eradicated? Or repelled? What do you Rud, naam. You just said a nice word, it was nice. Repelled. Naam. Addararu, a harm, la yuraddu. Kama la yuzalu bi addarar. La yuraddu batilun bi batilin. That a harm should not be um, repelled with another harm. Or a batil should not be pushed away and rejected and refused with an, or refuted with another batil. No. This qa'ida is also one of the five big qawaid of qawaid al fiqih which are agreed upon. Which is al-dararu yuzalu. Al-dararu yuzalu. Getting rid of harm. What does the word tarar, darar mean? So now we're going to define it word for word. What does the word al-darar actually mean? Three meanings. The first one is ma tadurru bihi sahibuka wa tanfa'u anta bihi. It's that which harms your friend, a person you know, and it benefits you. That's called darar. It harms, it means harm um, you and it harms and it benefits uh, uh, it benefits you and it harms them. Also, the word darar is known as what? Ala nuqsan deduction. Deduction is also um, darar. For example, they would say, Dakhala alayhi darar fi malihi. Darar entered his, his wealth, meaning deducted his wealth. His wealth got deducted. Also, it's known uh, as a diq when something's tight. A place is squashy. So, for example, you say, مَكَانُ ذُو ضَرَرْ This place is a place which is tight. ذُو uh, ضَرَرْ أَيُّ ضِيق What does it mean? Uh, it means, كُلُّ مَا يَضُرُّ الْإِنسَانِ فِي نَفْسِهِ Anything that will harm a person in his nafs, in his soul, or يَضُرُّ الْإِنسَانُ بِغَيْرُهُ or something a person will harm another person min diqin by either deducting something from him or nuqsan fi malin or even deduct something from his uh, wealth that's what it means what does the qaida now mean so we understood it word for word what does the principle actually in, what do we intend by this principle what we intend by this principle is um, that the harm yajibu an yuzal a harm should be removed. A harm should actually be removed. But, وَلَكِنْ لَا يُزَالُ بِضَرَرِ مِثْلُهُ But it should not be erased and removed with a harm equal to it. Good. So nothing equal to it. وَلَا بِأَشَدَّ مِنْهُ And nothing more greater than it. And why is that? Why, is the, uh, why does the harm have to first be erased? The reason is because لِأَنَّ الْإِعْتِنَاءِ الشَّارِعِ Because the consideration that the Sharia has given to the manhiyat, to the prohibitions, is greater than the consideration it has given the orders. Ah, you need to know that. The Sharia, the consideration it gave to the prohibitions is greater than the consideration is given the orders. The, sh the manhiyat is higher than the ma'murat. Than the ma'murat. So because of that, to erase the harm takes precedence over bringing good. You see, bringing good. So, the Sharia came, this Sharia came to do what? Izalatul Darar. This Sharia, why did it first come? To remove what? Harm, which was what? Shirk. It came to remove shirk from the people. Not only that, but all types of harm. 
And the best way to remove a harm is bil khayri with good and salah. So this evil that is present, good should be removed with it. So the person moves away the shirk and removes it with what? With tawheed. He removes it with what? With tawheed. Good. Not that a person removes shirk and brings another form of shirk. He removes the shirks of the idols and he says, idols are stones, they're insignificant. Why would we worship a stone? How about we worship what? We worship prophets. Are they better? Well, no. You've removed something evil with another evil. No. Not at all. Do you see? فَإِنَّ الشَّرِيعَةَ Because the sharia تَمْنَعُ كُلُّ مَا فِيهِ مَفْسَدَ The sharia it, it, it refuses, it erases, and it gets rid of every form of harm. Now the harm are two types. The harm is how many types? Two. A harm which is khalisah. Uh, the, this, ma, this harm, it's harm from all angles. You paying attention. It's all harm from all angles. There's no good in it whatsoever. And that's shirk. Shirk is called mafsadatun khalisah. It's a mafsada, pure mafsada, pure mafsada. No good in it whatsoever. Not even one percentage shirk. You with me? So that's why you can't say, oh, I will remove this shirk with another shirk. Because shirk, all of it is what? Pure. Does it make sense? Good. Or it can be what? It can be? It can be mafsada, which is rajiha. The mafsada is more than the maslaha. It's not pure mafsada. There is maslaha present. But the maslaha, the good, is lesser in degree than the what? Than the mafsada. The mafsada is more, such as alcohol. As Allah said, يَسْأَلُونَكَ عَنِ الْخَمْرِ وَالْمَيْسِرِ قُلْ فِيهِمَا إِثْمٌ كَبِيرٌ وَمَنَافِعُ لِلنَّاسِ وَإِثْمُهُمَا أَكْبَرُ مِنْ نَفْعِهِمَا It's harm and its problems are more than the, the good that is present in it. That's what? That is the types of mafsada. The sharia gets rid of those types of mafsada, both of them, both types, gets rid of them. وَتَأْمُرُ And it orders, be, uh, وَتَأْمُرُ بِكُلِّ مَا فِيهِ مَصْلَحَةٌ خَالِصَةٌ أَوْ رَاجِحَةٌ And it, the Sharia orders the two types of Maslaha. Maslaha which is pure, Maslaha khalisa, and a Maslaha which is rajaha. A Maslaha which is, which is pure in, and all, in all of its forms, like what? Tawheed. Tawheed is a Maslaha which is khalisa. Pure Maslaha. Pure, pure good. Tawheed. Is there any evil in Tawheed? Never. Pure. What about a maslaha which is rajaha? Maslaha which is rajaha is like jihad. Jihad has mafsada in it. What's the mafsada? Blood of the believer to, har to spill is, is harm. A mother to have lost her child is harm. The wife to have without her children is harm. The children to become orphans is harm. But the maslaha is higher. Why? لِتَكُونَ كَلِمَةَ اللَّهِ الْعُلْيَا the maslaha is higher, which is that the word of Allah goes high. You see? Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah said, وَقَدْ أَمَرَنَا اللَّهُ سُبْحَانَهُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered us أَنْ نُزِيلَ الشَّرَّ That we remove the evil بِالْخَيْرِ with good بِحَسَبِ الْإِمْكَانِ In accordance to our ability. وَنُزِيلَ الْكُفْرَ And that we remove the kufr, the disbelief بِالْإِيمَانِ with iman. وَالْبِدْعَةَ And that we remove the bid'ah بِالْحَسَبِ we remove the bid'ah with sunnah. وَالْمَعْصِيَةِ بِالطَّاعَةِ And we remove the sin with obedience. مِنْ أَنفُسِنَا وَمَنْ عِنْدَنَا With our own selves and with those who are around us. So the harm has to be removed. Removed in with what? With good. With good. Now, what about if, what about if this evil has to be removed? But there's no good present to be removed with it. We don't have good to remove it with it. We have evil that we want to remove it with. Then the matter doesn't, it doesn't leave these two types. It's these two types. It's one of the one of the two. So these are the two forms or two ways it can occur when we have to remove uh, evil with another evil. It comes in one of these two ways. The first one is, أَنْ يَكُونَ الضَّرَرِ 
that this harm and nashi akhaffu min al-darar al-muzal that the mafsada that is being removed is more than that which is going to remove it. So the evil that's present, the harm that's present, what the person wants to do is wants to remove it with a lesser of a harm. So this harm is going to be removed, the bigger harm is going to be removed with a harm which is lesser than it. This one, the scholars, they say, لا ريب without a doubt, أن احتمال أخف الضررين لدفع أعلاهما هو المتعير. Then it becomes, it becomes mandatory for Dua'in that on that particular person to eradicate the harm which is greater with a lesser harm that's going to come. So that bigger harm is present, it's already there and it's big, it's a big harm. But you're now going to remove it, but what you're going to remove it with is what? It's a lesser harm. You have to remove it now. That's no problem with that one. The second one is, أَنْ يَكُونَ الضَّرَرُ النَّاشِ أَعْضَمُ مِنَ الضَّرَرِ الْحَالِي أَوْ مُسَاوِي اللَّهُ فِي الدَّرَجَةِ the harm that's already present, so we all agree that this thing that's present is harm. But you now want to go and you want to change it with a bigger harm. Or even a harm that is equivalent to it. Does it make sense? The harm that's present, you now want to go and remove that harm. With what type of harm? With something that's either equal to it or even greater than it. This time what we say to you is the qa'ida that we are studying now replies to you which is what? لَا يُرَدُّ بَاطِلٌ بِبَاطِلٍ A batil should not be eradicated and it should not be removed with a batil that is either equal to it or greater than it. Does it make sense? It is not permissible. It is not permissible. فَلَا يَجُوزُ أَنْ يُزَالَ الضَّرَرُ بِمِثْلِهِ it's not permissible to remove an evil with an evil that's equal to it. Well, I mean, baby Ola, and it's also without a doubt, it's even more, it makes more sense. Allah yuzala bima hu ashaddu minhu wa a'la. And it's even great, you can't remove it with something that is greater. This qa'idah that we've now taken, it's actually now connected to two other qa'idah. Just the way we took it. It's got irtibat, um, it's got a connection, it's got a relation with uh, 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 two other qa'idas, which are great. Which is what? إِذَا تَعَارَضَتْ مَفْسَدَتَان If two evils are the same. You see, two mafsadas are the same. They stay the same. رُوعِيَ أَعْضَمُهَا ضَرًا بِرْتِكَابِ أَخَفِّهِمَا Two evils are present. So there's a, sorry, there's a harm present. To remove it with a lesser. This qa'idah doesn't deal with that one. But it's, it shows you that it can happen. Because it can come. So it's connected to that type. But it doesn't deal with this one. This qa'id that we're taking, we're not dealing with a, a less high harm, lesser than the other harm. Because our qa'id here is, what is it talking about? Not trying to remove a batil with another batil. But that one you can. So that doesn't, our qa'id here is not dealing with that one. Our qa'id is dealing with the second type, which is what? Pushing a harm, either equal to the one that you're doing, rahamukallah, or even greater than it. But the second qa'idah that it's connected to, the second qa'idah it's connected to is that the pushing the harm away and getting away rid of the harm takes precedence over what? Then bringing the good. Dar'ul mafsada, pushing away the harm, awla mi jalbil maslaha, then bringing a good. Before you bring the good, get rid of the harm. Don't bring a good when the harm is present. No. Why? Because pushing away the harm takes precedence over what? Then bringing good. Those two qa'idah which we're going to take, inshallah, huh, are not what's this qa'id, this one, this one, but it has that relation. It, 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 it enters onto each other. What's the evidence for this principle? One ayah and one hadith. The first one is, the first evidence for that is Qawluhu Ta'ala where Allah So I'm going to bring one ayah and one hadith and they're going to mention um, the furu' that come from it. Okay? Um, and I'm going to mention one ay two ayahs and two hadith, sorry. Two ayahs and two hadith. The two ayahs is the Qawluhu Ta'ala where Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala 
he said subhanahu wa ta'ala وَلَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا رُسُلَنَا بِالْبَيِّنَاتِ We have sent our messengers with what? Bayinat, clarity. وَأَنزَلْنَا مَعْهُمْ And we sent with them الْكِتَابَ The book وَالْمِيزَانَ And the scale لِيَقُومَ النَّاسُ So the people can stand with بِالْقِسْطِ Justice. So the people can stand with what? With justice. Where is the... So what was the reason? What's the hikmah? Mean in Zal al Kutub to bring, bring, bring the books down, the Quran down, and to also bring the Mizan, which is the balance, the scale. What's the wisdom behind it? And Yaqum al Nasib al Adl. So the people stand with justice. Ibn Jarir al Tabari said, Li Yaqum al Nasib al Qisti. What is meant by it? He said, Li Yamal al Nasib al Adl. That the people act upon with one, with, with one another by way of just. Fa Amrun bil Adli. By Allah order, ordering them to come with justice. It's nahyun is a prohibition and the dhi with the opposite, which is what? It is oppression, oppression and ex exceeding one's limits. So Islam is getting rid of dhulm first. Get away from dhulm. Don't come with it. It's getting rid of that one and it's telling them to come with what? Al Adil. So it's prohibiting them first and then it's ordering them to come with this. The next evidence is more apparent and more clear. Which is what? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said in the ayah, Surah Al Imran, wa in tasbiru, if you are patient with the plotting and the planning that the kuffar have, are putting and waging against you, wa in tasbiru, if you are patient, wa tattaqu, and you come with taqwa, la yadurrukum, it will not harm you, kayduhum, they are plotting and they are planning against you, shay'an whatsoever. Inna Allah, inna Allah bima amaluna muhit. Allah knows. And he's encompassed knowledge with everything which they are doing and you guys are doing. Now, now, are the disbelievers causing harm? Are they being, what are the believers told to come with? Patience. And they are told to come with what? Taqwa. The harm is there. No one disagrees. But how are they going to remove this harm? With patience, which is lesser than the harm that's already there. And that is, which is what? Taqwa, which is a lesser harm than the, the harm that they are plotting and they are planning. And the ayah is showing. That's one. And that's two verses. Two hadiths. The first hadith is the hadith of Anas ibn Malik radiallahu ta'ala anhu, where a Bedouin came. And the Arabian bala fil masjid, a Bedouin urinated in the masjid. Faqamu ilay, the people stood up on him. Faqala Rasulullah, the messenger, the people stood up, they, what they started to shout at him. The messenger said, La, tuz, la tuzrimuh. The messenger said, Don't cut him from his urinating. Please don't cut it from him. Let him finish. The man finished, he urinated, and then the messenger called for a dalu, and then he poured the dalu water, which was water was in it, and the Prophet poured it over where the man urinated. Why did the man let him finish off the harm that he was doing? What was the hikmah? What's the wisdom behind it? The reason is because what he's doing without a doubt is a harm. Are you with me? It's a harm. But to let him finish off the harm and not touch this harm is lesser in degree than if we try to remove this harm like that. Why? Because if we do try to remove this harm from him, he's urinated, if we try to stop it, what we're coming with is a greater harm than what he's doing. And what's the greater harm that we're coming with? First of all, what we're doing is, he himself will become sick if he stops his urine quickly, it may physically harm him. The second one is, Maybe he may run around in the masjid and cause even more greater harm by putting the urine to all over the masjid. But now it's exclusively in one particular place. So our stopping him is more of a harm than the harm that's already present. So what we do is we let him urinate. Now, some Muslims will say to you, Wallahi, you like this guy urinating in the masjid. Because there's lack of hikmah, right? They think you're with the idea of him urinating in the masjid. No, it's not. But that stopping here will cause what? When the people don't have that fiqh of da'wah and they don't understand it, they cause these corruptions and these harm to the people. Another evidence for this hadith is that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa said, this hadith is narrated by Abdullah ibn Mas'ud ibn Ghafil al-Hadhali, the great companion, who was called Abi Abdul Rahman. He said, radiyallahu ta'ala anhu, he said, satakunu atharatun wa umurun tunkirunaha. There's going to come there's going to come matters and things that you will dis disagree with. 
meaning re rulers, leaders, people in authority are going to come to you guys in which you disagree with what they're doing. All the things that they are doing, the way in which they are acting, the way that they are planning things, you'll disagree with, you'll dislike. The companions, they said, Ya Rasulullah, fama ta'muruna. O Messenger of Allah, when those types of rulers come, for what would you order us? The Messenger said, to addun al haqq al alaykum wa tas'aloon Allah al lakum. You guys fulfill your rights for that ruler. By obeying him, if he tells you to give him something, you give it to him. As for what is yours, you ask Allah for it. You wait for the day of judgment for Allah to take it from him and give it to you all. What's the hikmah in this hadith? And what's the wajhul istidlal? What's the wajhul adalala? Is that that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he ordered the, the people who have been ruled to do what? He ordered them that they do not do munaza'at. That they do not munaza'atuhum al-umara. Al -um al that they don't dispute with their rulers. And that their dispute will cause a greater harm than what he's currently doing. What he's currently doing now, and that is present in his actions, is a harm. No one disagrees. We all agree. But what you're going to do is greater in harm by disputing with him than that which is currently present. For example, any one of you today who looks at the world, what's taken place, will come to realize that some countries, the rulers that were there, were being complained of and the evil that they came with. And there's no doubt about that. But it, they got removed and matters got much worse. Matters got much worse. Foreign intervention. Their crops and their oil and everything which they own got taken from them. They're now starving. They don't have no jobs. Corruption. All of the things in which they said was present when the ruler was there, it's there now and even more. And even, and even more. So it hasn't ever happened that a people disputed with the ruler except what has come from their actions is far greater and that's why some of the Salaf used to say Imamun Ja'ir a ruler that is a transgressor who is ruling for 40 years and transgressing on the people and causing corruption is better one day without any ruler why? it's not that that, that ruler is loved La Wallah he's not loved he's not liked the people, scholars that say don't oppose the ruler, leave him alone, are not saying that we love this ruler. Are not in agreement with the ruler. But what they're saying is, ما يترتب منه Which, what will come out from your actions? What will you guys come with? It's greater than the harm that's there. You see, this qaida shows that. That, but the, the issue is that the ruler, he himself has aslul iman. Now, he's a believer in the first place. Naam. He's a believer. Naam. Matters that come from it. Furu' al qa'ida. Some branches that come out of from this principle. One. La buddha li da'iyah. It is upon the da'i that's calling to the path of Allah. It is necessary. From him. Min mukhalifin. That he has those who oppose him. Qa'ida tells us that every da'iyah is going to have people are going to oppose him. Oppose him. And that person that opposes you, who opposes you, he may sometimes exceed the limits of the boundaries of the sharia in oppressing you. He may consider you a kafir. He may say you're a fasiq. Or he may even forge statements against you. فَلَا يَجُوزُ It is not permissible. أَنْ يُقَابِلَهُ الدَّاعِيَةُ بِمِثْلِ فِعْلِهِ You're not allowed to reply to him in exactly what he did to you. So he said, you're a kafir. You say, oh, you're a kafir, by the way. You call me a kafir. Okay, so why are you a kafir? Why? Because you're coming with the evil he came with, an evil that is the like it. This guy that goes against it. Or a person, he forges statements against you and you go and you forge statements against him. Again, he's doing something harmful and you're replying with another harm that is either equal to it or sometimes you may even go higher and greater than he did. Great. 
بل يضبط أقواله وأفعاله ويزيرها بميزان العدل and that the person he follows the path which is just and that whatever he does whatever he does he makes sure that it stays within the boundaries of the Sharia نعم and doesn't leave the path of justice the second thing is the second thing is and this is the call of Shaykh al-Islam Ibn al-Qayyim Ibn Taymiyyah listen what he said he said مَا يَقَعُ مِن ظُلْمِهِمْ وَجَوْرِهِمْ Everything that occurs from the rulers, from their oppression and their wrongdoing, بِتَأْوِيلٍ سَائِغٍ With an interpretation that is considered. They come with an interpretation, something that is understandable. Or غَيْرَ سَائِقٍ Or even if they come with an interpretation that doesn't make sense. He just makes up whatever he wants, the ruler. فَلَا يَجُوزُ It is even both times, it is not permissible. And yuzala for him to be removed. Lima fihi in something that is in it. Min dhulmin wa jawrin. You're not allowed to remove him. In that which you're doing is another form of oppression and transgression. Kama huwa aada tu akthar in nufos. Like it is a lot of the people's ways today. To zinu sharra. They want to remove an evil. Bima huwa sharru minu. They want to remove it with another evil which is greater than it. Wa to zinu al-udwan. He wants to remove a, uh, a, a oppression or a, uh, a, a somebody uh, dealing with him in a wrong way. He wants to deal with him in return in a way which is greater than the one he, one he dealt with him in. عَلَيْهِمْ Going against the rulers. يُوجِبُ مِنَ الظُّلْمِ وَالْفَسَادِ It necessitates a transgression and a corruption أكثر greater than مِنْ ظُلْمِهِمْ than the, the, the oppression that they came with. فَيَصْبِرْ عَلَيْهِ Be patient with them. Like Allah said to the, the believers, if you're patient with them and you come tak with taqwa, فَإِن تَصْبِرُوا وَتَتَّقُوا لَا يَضُرُّكُمْ كَيْدُهُمْ شَيْئًا Their oppression and their wrongdoing will not harm you. Number three, يُحْرَأْ يَحْرُمُ Number three, it is prohibited in the مُنَاظَرَةِ أَهْلِ الْبِدْعَ It is prohibited to debate the people of innovation. أَنْ يَزِيدَ الْمُنَاظِرُونَ فِي الْمُنَاظَرَةِ نَوْعًا مِنَ الْبَاطِلِ It is it's prohibited. If a person is debating with an innovator, or if he's debating with an atheist, or if he's debating with a Christian, or whoever he's debating with, it is impermissible for the believer who's debating with the person who he's debating with to come with a form of false statements. He makes up things. وَإِن كَانُوا فِي الْأَكْثَرِ عَلَى الْحَقِّ بِدَافِعِ الْحَمَاسِ النُصْرَةِ السُنَّةِ وَدِفَاعَ الدين. Even if your matter is, and you think to yourself, I want to what? I want to come with the haq. And you're doing it for the religion to go up. That's the whole reason. And to protect the religion. Then don't think about coming with a batil greater. Or trying to remove this evil with another evil. Don't do that. Because why? You have to debate with them. مُنَاظَرَةٌ بِالصِّدْقِ وَالْعَدْلِ الَّذِي أَمَرَ اللَّهُ بِهِ You debate with them in justice. You debate with them by being truthful in what you say. قَالَ الشَّيْخُ الْإِسْلَامِ بِبْنُ تَيْمِيَةٌ Ibn Taymiyyah said in his kitab, Dar'u ta'arud al-aqli wa al-naqal. Ibn Taymiyyah said, La budda, it is necessary. An tahrus al-sunnah, that you defend the sunnah. Bil-haqqi wa al-sidqi wa al-adl. That you protect the sunnah with truth, with haqq. With, with uh, haqq. And wa al-sidq and truthfulness. Wa al-adl and justice. La tahrus bi kathibin wa la dhulm. Don't try to protect the religion by lying and by oppressing. فَإِذَا رَدَّ الْإِنسَانَ بَاطِلًا بِبَاطِلًا بِبَاطِلٍ Anyone who refutes a batil with another batil أو قابل بدعة ببدعة Or he um, opposes a innovation with another form of innovation كَانَ مِمَّا ذَمَّهُ السَّلَفُ وَالْأَئِمَّةِ The salaf and the rulers, aima uh, scholars This is what they had prohibited This is what they rebuked This is what they scolded and they went against So the type of a batil that the person cannot come with the batil is a batil either either equal to it or greater than it. Wallahu a'lam wa sallallahu sallam ala sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam wa akhru da'wana anilhamdulillahi rabbil alamin.